I'm Mary Matte sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Misha Pollan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. And this weekend was the White House Correspondents' Dinner where the White House Press Corps gets together with the White House to celebrate how subservient they are to state power. That's really what it is. And they get to wear fancy clothes in the process. But of course, uh, they have to pretend as if really this is a celebration of uh, a dogged media holding the powerful to account. But sometimes the truth slips through. And one illustration of how enmeshed the state is with the press corps is that the press corps now is populated by people who only recently worked for the state. For example, Jen Psaki and Simone Sanders, both of them working as spokespeople for President Biden and Kamala Harris. So here they are talking about how free the press is and how great the press is on their MSNBC shows. One of the fun parts, if you will, of uh, the responsibilities of the White House Correspondents Association is this dinner. Yeah. April 29th, the White House Correspondents Association dinner is happening. Yes, Nerd Prom. Called Nerd Prom, Kurt. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> it's for nerds. What prom would they have in that town that is not for nerds? <laughs> <laughs> is what we call it. I remember during the Trump administration, Donald Trump, then President Trump, did not attend mm -hmm. the dinner. One of the greatest acts of a president in history, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> the greatest. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Prior to him becoming president, uh, when uh, the Biden-Harris administration came into office, obviously President Biden did revive that tradition of yeah. attending the dinner. Why is it important for the sitting president of the United States of America, you think, to go to the dinner? I have a question. Who was watching this on when it was broadcast, who was not 45 minutes on a on a, a air, airline, airplane runway waiting to get off the plane? <laughs> that is their captive audience. It's true. It's true. That's where probably most of their ratings are coming from. It's hugely important because it shows respect and honors the work of people who are in the media. And it oh shows my, that in a democracy. I, oh, my <laughs> God. I hate her. I, I never like hated her before. <laughs> it's just a funny she's the worst. <laughs> she's the worst. It shows respect. You. Oh, my God. It's just so funny because they both were the flunkies for the president and the vice president. You can't have a more deceptive job in government you have to lie all the it's time it's not about telling the truth it's about respect <laughs> it's mm -hmm. about respect it's about you show respect <laughs> the code the code of the uh, white house press corps it used to mean something <laughs> <laughs> You can disagree. You may disagree with their coverage. Um, you can get that all out in the funny part of your speech. And, and oftentimes oh. the speech that a president delivers is one that has all sorts of um, funny, funny critiques or funny jokes about media organizations. I want to put two forks on a table and headbutt them right now. <laughs> Like gets them some things off their chest. <laughs> By the way, those speeches take years off of your life if you're in the press or communications office. Hard to deliver a funny speech. But a good <sighs> chunk of the speech. Respect for the comedy craft. You know, it, take, it, it takes work. It takes a lot of work to write those jokes for the president. Yeah, no, OnlyFans <laughs> is a hard job. Not <laughs> Biden's tepid. <laughs> you had to how much Adderall do you have to take to get through that set? <laughs> is also on the value of media and freedom of press oh, wait, and how important it is to a democracy. Did Biden at any point make any jokes about himself with that cheat sheet? Because that's what I would have told him to do if I was writing for him. I would be like, I would have him make a joke about. Oh, like, yeah. I don't think he did. I don't think they took Which would show like a sense of humor, but I guarantee you that's not. Because when somebody, and you could do that and it would come off a lot better. Yeah. But they would never allow, it's that, it's that dishonest of a place. The closest he got to self uh, mockery uh, was when he made fun of his age. How did he make fun of it? I don't know. I don't remember. But Stairs are getting harder and harder. <laughs> uh, and Roy Wood Jr. made fun of his classified documents issue where he... Good for Roy. Yeah. Yeah. But that's about it. See, And it is honoring the work, the blood, sweat, and tears of the people in the room. There's also um, scholarships and awards that are given. But even just being present and being there as a president sends that message to the media that you value what they do. I think so. so. And... Of course, they value what they do because they're not doing their jobs. If the media was actually doing its job and holding these people to account, would they want to be in the same room as them having a celebration in fancy gowns 
and honoring each other? Of course not. It's such a repulsive proposition out of the gate yeah. that we're all going to be cool. Like we all know that like we're on the same side, no matter like, I, I don't know how you hold this up as a good thing. It's, it's yeah. like a, it's like when uh, Nancy Pelosi's kid uh, was, you know, George Bush is a father figure to me. Yeah, exactly. And she, exactly. Uh, people are all surprised when he invites her out on stage. Oh, first of all, who's seeing George Bush live? And uh, he brings her on stage and uh, cause they believe in it. They, t- they totally believe in it and they can't help it. Flaunt you know, it. it's wrestling. They don't, they yeah, believe in this. They believe in it and they can't help but flaunt it because they love it. It gives them meaning to flaunt it because they love being in, they love being anointed as being part of the elite. And so they want to be a part of it. They want to show it off and they don't realize how ridiculous it looks. Especially, I mean, given the, I think we often forget here in America because there is a free press, a fair press, that the the cornerstone of our democracy is that journalists can ask the most powerful people in America, whether they be presidents or CEOs, uh, some of the toughest questions. I think we forget that around the world that that is not the case. And there's no. so many journalists who. Uh, what is the worst <laughs> thing about Trump? Go. That's the, <laughs> the tough. <laughs> And it's so funny. They're saying this days after it was revealed that Biden is calling on reporters and knows their questions in advance. These pre-scripted questions. So they're saying they're, well, they're they didn't celebrating for that. It was free. <laughs> Freedom is being uh, just trampled on across across the right. Globe. And in fact, when it's adversarial, sometimes in the briefing room at the State Department or the Defense Department or the White House or with spokespeople for the Vice President, and others. That is democracy working. Oh, that well, is except for that one African guy, right? <laughs> Who ruined my going away cake. <laughs> they were like, we're trying to give Jen a cake. <laughs> sir, can you shut your African mouth? You're in the back for a reason, sir. It's called respect. <laughs> or Julian Assange. Just put him in a prison for multiple years. We don't years. talk about him. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, he shall not be named being able to push back on a spokesperson, ask them tough questions, right? And the spokesperson can sometimes push back at them and try to provide information to the best of their ability. Translation, the spokesperson lies through their teeth and the media writes it down and takes it, takes it on faith <laughs> with rare, rare exceptions. And I have a question. If Jen Psaki respects the system so much, how come she didn't do the traditional route of dancing with the stars before this? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? Sometimes when someone actually does their job and push back, like remember when Matt Lee of the Associated Press was uh, asking some questions about Ukraine and then the State Department spokesperson, Ned Price, accused him of spreading Kremlin talking points. So that's oh what happens. Oh my, yeah, if do ever someone that. does their job, they get accused of, you know, being uh, working at the behest of Russia. Wouldn't an important news story be <laughs> just generally a talking point? Yeah. <laughs> kind of internationally? <laughs> That does not exist in China or Russia Mm. or a lot of other authoritarian countries. So even in those moments of adversarialness, um, it's working. It's democracy working. So I can call Joe Biden Winnie the Pooh. I have that freedom, (laughs) I guess is what they're saying. Uh, We got more. Uh, Here is Sabrina Siddiqui of the Wall Street Journal on how she actually doesn't think being adversarial as a journalist is necessarily a virtue. So let's just be honest. Okay, you're not always going to get a straight answer from the podium in the briefing room. If you are traveling with uh, the president or the vice president, you're not going to always get a straight answer from the president or vice president. Heck, I used to be one of the people helping people craft maybe some not so straight answers. So are that. you joking? <laughs> Hell, I'm a big liar myself. <laughs> How do you balance the fact that these are folks you have to continue to work with, right? Being asking the tough questions, but also not necessarily being confrontational. Well, I think that's exactly uh, the point. You're not supposed to inherently be confrontational, nor is a relationship supposed to be adversarial. Uh, I, I'll bet you all this talk. Like, this is amazing. This talk because I promise you, they're the ones when it comes to every identity politic bullshit thing. You're like now is the time to be <laughs> confrontational, not to be polite. We're get, like, and then, but when it comes for this, like, fancy crap, now, now, come on. It's like you, you're, uh, don't be Ace Ventura at that gathering before. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear more what she has to say. I think what everyone has to understand is that we as journalists are doing our jobs in trying to keep the public informed. And then those who are working at the White House, of course, are doing their own jobs as aides, as spokespeople, trying to stay on message and control the narrative. But at the end of the day, uh, as a journalist, you are the arbiter of truth. And so you don't (laughs) simply take... (laughs) Oh, okay. So you're not supposed to be adversarial. 
yet you're also the arbiter of truth. So translation, you are supposed to be a stenographer and that makes you the arbiter of truth because you're choosing not to be adversarial. And of course, if you're not supposed to, if you're not supposed to be adversarial, why are you there? Why are you covering people in government? If you want to not be adversarial towards people in government, go work for them. Uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, it's like a checks and balances. I thought it's supposed to be. Is that <laughs> adversarial? By con- considered adversarial, the system of checks and balances. It's supposed to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be. You're supposed to not be on the same team. Yes. Of uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Well, here's who won the award for covering Joe Biden the best. What? Aldo Beckman Award for Overall Excellence in White House Coverage is named for a former association president, the late Chicago Tribune correspondent Aldo Beckman. This year, the award goes to Matt Beiser of the Washington Post. The The judges said Matt Beiser stood out among his competitors for work that went beyond the humdrum of covering the managed events of the presidency and the White House. Beiser captured the spirit of Joe Biden, particularly with stories about the president's brother and how his Catholic faith influenced his strategic vision of the office. (laughs) What in the... (laughs) That's hard-hitting right there. How Joe Biden's brother's Catholic faith or how Biden's Catholic faith but you, you got an uh, influences award vision. For that? <laughs> he gets an okay. award. <laughs> did, did you ever see that Simpsons where where Mr. Burns goes on the Howard Stern kind of show? Yeah. He goes, if you want to if you want to go after my a notorious love of cashews, feel free. <laughs> That's what it and is. they start playing fart noises and it like <laughs> That's what it is. Watch this. The what WHCA is pleased to give the Aldo Beckman Award to Matt Beiser. Who was Aldo Beckman? I bet he was a huge pussy. <laughs> He's a huge suck up punk, whoever he was. <laughs> you want an Aldo Beckman, dude? Okay. They're putting up. You <laughs> 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 did a great job, and that's why you gave the Bilbo Beckman Award. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a, I'm looking him up now. How and why did it take so long for journalism, this courageous, risky, adversarial, hard hitting, and intrepid, to win this incredibly prestigious award? Assange is in prison. Cy Hirsch is an outcast because this is what they consider journalism. That's from Glenn Greenwald. Joe Biden. And the, so this is the award winner, uh, Matt Beiser. Uh, this is from him. Joe Biden in peak form outside a pub in Ireland. When you're here, you wonder why anyone would want to leave, he told the crowd inside. Wow, that's some hard hitting journalism. Your family is <laughs> called Hospitaliano and it's Irish. <laughs> President, and this is more from award winning journalist Matt Visor. President Biden says Jill didn't want him to come with her to the Super Bowl, so he's going to be watching from home, apparently eating guacamole as well as chocolate chip <laughs> I'm take ice weird cream shits afterwards. After <laughs> <laughs> Really hard-hitting stuff right there. Uh, here's more from the award-winning journalist. What's your message to Republicans prepared to block a January 6th commission? Biden, eat some chocolate chip. I can't imagine anyone voting against the establishment of a commission on the greatest assault since the Civil War on the Capitol. But at any rate, I came for ice cream. <laughs> Great stuff. Guy loves he, ice cream, you know? Here's more coverage from... Uh, he stopped for ice cream. He attended a wake... He went to two swing states and he talked about far more than the coronavirus that for so long has dominated his presidency in American life. My debrief on how Biden's week was oddly normal. Uh. <laughs> That's what wins you an award in Washington. Okay, so Al- the Aldo Beck, the prestigious Aldo Beckman Award? Yes. Because who's Aldo Beckman, right? Uh, this, so this is from the Wikipedia. This is all that there is. There's four lines. Uh He was an American journalist for the Chicago Tribune from 1959 to his death and the president of the White House Correspondents Association. That's it. That's his achievements is he's the president of that stupid dinner. (laughs) And he gave an award based on him. There's his wiki. Wouldn't they be like uh, playing him up if he was anything on Wikipedia? Fair enough. Well, I think that's a good reflection of the type of journalism that he accomplished nothing but this. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special. 
COVID lies are funny. <laughs> <laughs>